Hemochromatosis Lecture Part 1 Topic Iron Metabolism Amla je dietary iron khachi eti ferric iron heme iron and non heme iron red meat e je iron ta thake ba animal je source holi these are heme iron and is a good dietary source for iron because the absorption is good in contrast vegetable irons are non heme iron uh, uh, which uh, um, the absorption is uh, uh, is good but uh, not uh, like him iron so next we have to know uh, what is the role of stomach acid in iron absorption gastric hydrochloric acid convert ferric iron into ferrous form and this is very important because in our country uh, even if it is not necessary, we consume a lot of PPI, proton pump inhibitor, uh, which inhibits gastric acid secretion and which is a known cause of iron deficiency. So this is very important and that the role of, uh, we have to understand the role of stomach acid in iron absorption. Now next, uh, we have to know uh, what is the site of iron absorption in the intestine. Is it duodenum, jejunum, or ileum, or colon? Because in most of the nutrients, the site of absorption is upper small intestine, especially upper jejunum. But divalent cation like iron, copper, and calcium, all of these three absorbed mostly from duodenum. And we have to know the transporter as well. The transporter is divalent metal transporter, which absorb iron, copper, and calcium. Right. So next, we have to understand the role of hepcidin, ferroportin, and interleukin-6 in iron absorption. So when iron absorb from the lumen of the duodenum to inside enterocyte and from there by divalent metal transporter of course and from or uh, from or uh, within from enterocyte iron absorb into bloodstream with the help of another channel is known as ferroportin ferroportin all right. So, hepcidin is a plasma protein synthesized by the liver, which helps to store iron within cell. And we all know the storage form. It's ferritin, and in in other tissue, in some tissue, it is as hemosiderin. Okay. So, this part is important because. In anemia of chronic disease, like in rheumatoid arthritis or any other chronic inflammatory disease or chronic disease, there is persistent inflammation which causes rise in interleukin 6, one of the pro inflammatory cytokines because of the inflammation, interleukin 6. And this interleukin 6 activate hepcidin synthesis by the hepatocyte and what will happen if the hepcidin level is high it will store the absorbed iron hepcidin will cause it to store within the cell as ferritin and hemosiderin so in an enemy of chronic disease the ferritin level will be high and iron will remain stored but iron will enter into blood stream less and uh, what we can call usable iron in bone marrow in blood stream the iron will be less available and definitely the erythropoiesis level will be less and there will be anemia this is known as anemia of chronic disease uh, where the ferritin level is high 
uh, I don't supply is okay, but the usable iron is low uh, because of the activation of HCD. Uh, the storage form is more, but the usable form is less. Okay, next we have to understand the role of transferrin in iron transport. Uh, definitely, the name is suggested transferrin. Transferrin. And previously, we, 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 I, I called, uh, I said, hepcidin. So, by the name, you know the source, hepatocyte, right? From hepatocyte, hepcidin. Okay, so transferrin, the name is also suggested. It transfer iron in the blood and supply iron to the tissues, which require iron for. Uh, like in bone marrow for hemoglobin synthesis or in many other tissue for uh, some biochemical reactions. So, how the tissue uptake iron from the blood? By receptor, obviously, and if you know the name of the receptor, you know the function as well. The name of the receptor is, receptor is uh, transferring receptor. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> here is two important issue as transferrin, transport iron and sequestered iron in the blood. So, iron will be uh, in that sense, transferrin is an antioxidant uh, because um, it uh, sequestered iron. So, tissue cannot readily use free iron and cannot make free radical as iron is a metal it helps to produce free radical so in that sense transferrin acts as an antioxidant because it sequestered iron it catch iron it transport iron and uh, of course tissue can utilize iron from uh, can uptake iron from transferrin by the means of solvar transferrin receptor. Now, uh, solvar transferrin receptor, uh, what we know about it, this receptor, uh, transferrin receptor helps to uptake iron from the, from transferrin, uh, obviously, and some, some form or some percentage of this receptor is also available, uh, uh, also found in blood as a soluble form. That's why uh, it's known as soluble transparent receptor. And uh, I think many of you already know that uh, we have a blood test. We can test this soluble transparent receptor in the blood. Uh, for example, this test, if you want to do in Dhaka, is available in ICD-TRP, uh, STFR, soluble transparent receptor. Because if the receptor is high, then uh, you can suspect the body iron or the patient is iron deficient. Because when the patient is iron deficient, uh, there will be receptor upregulation. So the soluble transferrin receptor will be high, and but in anemia of chronic disease, as uh, there is no true iron deficiency, the usable iron is uh, deficient, of course, but uh, iron absorption is normal. So body iron store is normal or rather high. So there is no true iron deficiency. So. Uh, as there is no true iron deficiency, the soluble transferrin receptor will not be upregulated, it will not be high. So, in a patient, uh, while you are in doubt whether uh, he is uh, suffering from uh, iron deficiency or anemia or chronic disease, uh, you can test soluble transferrin receptor on STFR. And if the STFR is high, uh, then it is most likely the patient is iron deficient. Is the STFR is normal or low? Uh, uh, you can suspect this could be anemia of chronic disease. All right. So uh, this is a really practical information. And uh, well, uh, next thing uh, we'll need to know 
uh, what is the mechanism of iron excretion well um, this is interesting uh, unlike many other vitamins and minerals uh, iron don't have any excretory pathway or excretory it it don't or uh, it doesn't excrete through the urine or through the kidney even it doesn't excrete through the liver or biliary system so uh, just uh, because of epithelial shedding from the skin epithelial turnover in the GI tract or other tract other urinary tract uh, we lost a small percentage of iron daily like uh, say one milligram per day this is because the cells uh, which we lost from our skin or GI tract and this cell contains some iron within it all right so uh, next this is important this physiology is important if there is no excretion pathway for iron then there is every chance that uh, we can develop iron overload because if i am uh, eating excessive iron containing food or if i am taking iron supplement or any vitamin which contain iron uh, <clears throat> what will happen this uh, what will happen then uh, definitely uh, um, uh, if we absorb all of this iron uh, and uh, as there is no excretion pathway uh, so we uh, eventually we all become overloaded with iron and uh, that will that will cause many problems which I will discuss later so um, this part is important because as there is no excretion pathway our GI tract, our enterocyte regulate iron absorption from diet. It's not surprising, right? As there is no excretion regulation in the excretory root, so there is regulation during absorption. So if your body iron store is good, if you are not deficient in iron, uh, whatever amount of iron you are taking through oral load it will not going to absorb uh, because of the regulation in the enterocyte and if you are truly iron deficient uh, the G uh, enterocyte will absorb available dietary iron as much as possible to correct your body deficiency this is really interesting and this is uh, definitely related to many clinical scenario so uh, for example if you have any doubt whether this patient is um, iron deficient or not, if you are going to supplement iron, are you going to supplement oral iron or you are, go you are going to give him parental iron like iron, dext iron sucrose, genophar, like this one. Definitely, as <clears throat> if you uh, give oral supplement, which is the normal, uh, normal uh, which is usually and the norm oral supplement and the first choice preferred choice so uh, this minimizes the risk of iron overload because uh, as long as the person is deficient of iron he or she will going to absorb oral iron if uh, he or she is not deficient even after supplement of oral iron uh, he or she will not going to uh, suffer from uh, iron overload because of the regulation in the gut but if we give someone parental iron uh, and uh, in regular basis and he or she is actually not iron deficient this will definitely increase the risk of uh, uh, risk of complications of iron overload okay. so now we know that why oral iron is still uh, though we have parental iron uh, why oral iron is the preferred therapy in most of the instances okay and now another thing is right another thing is uh, well this regulation of iron absorption in the enterocyte is definitely related with hemochromatosis this is this is where uh, the hfe gene due to mutation of the hfe gene in hemochromatosis this regulation of iron absorption in the guard is interrupted 
and iron is absorbed in the affected person iron is absorbed in excessive amount because of this uh, loss of uh, gi regulation of iron absorption all right so uh, now we know uh, what happens in hemochromatosis and uh, you next you have to only know uh, what what is the sites or preferred sites of iron deposition in our body uh, by knowing that you will be able to tell all the clinical symptoms and complications of hemochromatosis of all them well so iron is preferably deposited or stored in the liver and that will explain that in hemochromatosis the liver will be overloaded with iron it will cause uh, hepatitis uh, cirrhosis it will greatly increase the chance of hepatocellular carcinoma and so far i can remember 40 times this of hepatocellular carcinoma in person with hemochromatosis okay and also uh, this uh, hepatic excess of iron is linked with another metabolic disorder uh, which i am not going to discuss right now but this is interesting the disorder is porphyria you know, porphyria cutanea tarda acute intermittent porphyria you can go through the book uh, this is also strongly linked to it uh, iron overload and liver disease uh, the another important site of iron deposition is heart so in person with hemochromatosis definitely one of the great danger is uh, arrhythmia conduction block uh, and definitely heart failure and another site of iron deposition is skin uh, so uh, we all know that uh, hemochromatosis another synonym synonym of hemochromatosis is bronze diabetes because of deposition of iron the skin will be darkened pigmented and because of the deposition of iron in the endocrine pancreas or islet supplying our hands and the patient may also develop diabetes that's why it's called bronch diabetes another site of iron deposition is the gonadotrop cell of anterior pituitary and hemochromatosis and kalman syndrome and hypopituitarism due to any other cause these are the most common causes of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism that means the gonadotropin is low fsslc is low that will cause low sex harm okay and um, uh, another important complication in hemochromatosis is early osteoarthritis early osteoarthritis uh, cartilage calcification or chondrocalcinosis which can predispose the person to pseudo gout okay so all right i think uh, we'll discuss hemochromatosis in details in a separate lecture so uh, this is all about uh, iron metabolism right now and uh, just you can recap the relation of iron metabolism with proton pump inhibitor the relation of iron metabolism with hemochromatosis iron metabolism and porphyrias and um, the role of soluble transfer in the sector thank you for watching this video uh, i see you again thank you